All right. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kim Townsend. I am the manager of training and development at HNL Lab Medicine. I'd like to thank you all for joining us this afternoon. And we're going to give you a little bit of an overview today on what it is like to be a phlebotomist at HNL Lab Medicine School of Phlebotomy. So, can everyone hear me all right? I'm going to reach out to uh, my moderator just to make sure that everyone can hear me all right. So, Jess, am I coming through okay? You sound great, Kim. All right, thank you. So, we're going to get started. I'm going to go over some things, and then there will be time for questions and answers at the end. So, about HNL Lab Medicine. HNL Lab Medicine is a leading multi-regional full-service medical laboratory. We provide testing and related services to physicians' offices, hospitals, long-term care facilities, employers, and industrial accounts. Uh, we're located in Allentown. We are right behind the Lehigh Valley Airport. So if any of you know where the airport is off of Airport Road, we are right back behind the airport on Roble Road. That is our corporate headquarters. Uh, we have more than 60 what we call PSCs, they're patient service centers in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And we work with more than 10 hospital systems, including Lehigh Valley Hospital Network. We've been serving the community for over 20 years. And we have some long-term care facilities, which are like nursing homes that we also work with, as well as some industry employers and also some physicians offices. So these are just a small area of where some of our patient service centers and satellite labs are located. So anything that you see on this map is with all over our 60 patient service centers, locations in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And then we also have what we call ACLs. There are acute care labs and they are actually inside hospitals. The majority of them are inside Lehigh Valley Hospital Network. And then we do also have one which is inside Holy Redeemer Hospital, which is down outside of the Philadelphia area. So if you would come to our school and you would be a student, you would be assigned at one of our patient service centers to do your clinical rotations. And then all of these that you see on this map are places that you could possibly get jobs once you actually finish the school. So what does a phlebotomist do? So I'm sure, you know, some of you may have an idea of what we do. Some of you are like, hey, that sounds like, you know, a, a great career or, you know, you've had blood taken before and it's kind of piqued your interest. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go over a little bit and show you a day in the life of what a phlebotomist does. So a phlebotomist does a lot of coordination. So you need to have skills to be able to be coordinated basically because you're going to be holding the needle you're going to you know have to manipulate tying a tourniquet things like that so you know you have to be coordinated but coordination also encompasses being able to coordinate your day and what you're doing so you'll have to be able to you know be able to work with scheduling patients and not only drawing their blood you have to be very attentive. So you have to be able to be able to pay attention and to really listen to your patients and also to pay attention to the scripts that you're getting. Um, we also have to have a lot of good communication skills because you are dealing with people of all different ages um, and you need to be able to communicate with all different people. And endurance, and you're probably thinking, well, why do I need endurance? I'm not an athlete, right? But, you know, it is a very demanding job in the way of you can be very, very busy at times where you're just go, 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 go all day long. You don't get really time to sit down um, and you need to be able to endure those types of conditions as well. And last but not least, which is probably one of the most important that you need to do is you need to have compassion because, again, just like with the communication, you're going to be dealing with a lot of people with different ages and they have different conditions and you need to be able to be compassionate to them. So why should you become a phlebotomist? First and foremost, job security. So as you can see on here, you know, 
right now the market is very, very strong in need for a phlebotomist. We presently have about 45 to 50 positions open at this time. And you know that's continuing to grow as we start to add more hospitals, more patient service centers, and that's a trend that is going to increase throughout the market. Also, it's actually a very quick career to jump on board with. So in eight weeks, you can become a phlebotomist. So what we do is you have two weeks that you are in class, and then you have six weeks that you actually go out to one of our patient service centers and you practice hands-on with a mentor to learn your skill. And within eight weeks, you graduate and you're on your way to being a phlebotomist. HNL right now is actually giving you the school for free, right? It is a $2,000 value. So we used to charge $2,000 for it. But right now, for those that are accepted into the program, it's a scholarship of $2,000 for that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Get paid to train. So what does that mean? I mean, I don't know how many of you read the articles that were in the paper or saw the bulletin boards, but right now we are hiring anybody that's accepted to our school as a per diem phlebotomist. And what that means is we pay you $10 an hour while you're in school and you're going to school, remember, for free for that eight weeks, but you're getting paid that $10 an hour while you're in school. So that really helps people that maybe, you know, can't afford to give up what they're doing right now to go to school. So it helps to give you that little bit of boost that you may need to get through those eight weeks great entry level pay. So according to the salary.com, average pay is anywhere from 27,000 to 44,000 a year, in addition to receiving full benefits. Uh, H&L right now, starting salary for a level one phlebotomist, which you would be upon graduation, is around the $17 an hour mark. Uh, we also have different tiers that you can move into as a phlebotomist, which, you know, your salaries go up from there. So right now, H&L has tier one, two, and three phlebotomist, as well as you could be a senior phlebotomist, as well as you could be a mentor, you could become a trainer, a manager, a supervisor, and you can move on from there. So there's a lot of opportunity just within the actual phlebotomy department themselves that will only further you know, your career and further your increases in salaries as well. Flexible work schedule. Like any other healthcare career, you know, we don't really close, right? So all of our PSCs are open at least six days a week. Some are open all day on a Saturday. Some are only open a half day. Uh, we do have a few that are open on Sundays. Uh, we have a few that are open from like six in the morning till seven at night, but there's a lot of flexibility in scheduling. You can work full time, you can work part time, you can be a per diem phlebotomist that, you know, you just come in when we need you. So there is a lot of flexibility. Uh, it's great for like, you know, that, that mom who maybe has kids in school or, you know, if you want to work on the weekends when you have babysitting or whatever. Um, we also have mobile phlebotomists who start like early in the morning, as early sometimes as like five o'clock in the morning, but then they're done their day by like noon because they go to nursing homes and they do the nursing home draws. They go to home draws, which is at patients' houses. So there's a lot of flexibility with that as well. Growth within the company. Again, I touched on that just a little bit when I was talking about the salaries. You know, you come in as an entry level tier one phlebotomist and you can work your way up through the phlebotomy department. Or if you decide that, you know what, I really like what I see that goes on in the lab. We, you know, can help you to be able to go back to school and get a degree so that you can work in the lab. If you decide that, 
you like something else within the company that we hire for. For example, uh, we've had people that used to be phlebotomists and now they work in our IT department, right? Anything that H&L hires for, it makes you eligible for tuition reimbursement. And then we also have a tuition assistance plan, which is a little bit different. And that's identifying that somebody wants you to move into another position and then we actually pay tuition assistance so there's a lot of great um, opportunity there. You can find work anywhere, almost anywhere. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, H&L Lab hires throughout Pennsylvania and New Jersey, but let's say eventually, you know, you work for us a few years and then life circumstances change and you move, you know, there you can always be a phlebotomist anywhere. It's a degree that you can take with you. Um, we are offering sign-on bonuses right now. So for our phlebotomist, even though you may have gone through our school, when you graduate, if we hire you, you are still eligible for the sign-on bonus. Uh, right now, sign-on sign -on bonuses are $3,000 and they're paid out in increments, but that is something that, you know, you would be eligible as well if you were hired upon completion of the school. It's a well-respected occupation. Um, phlebotomy is work that helps to save lives. You know, I like to talk to the students and say, hey, you know, your doctor cannot make a diagnosis a lot of times unless they send you for that blood work and they see that, you know, your white cell counts high, okay? Makes them think, oh, wow, white cell counts high. What could that be? And they start investigating everything. So you have a very, very important job as being a phlebotomist in helping diagnosing patients. And it's easy to apply to for our school. And we'll go over that in a few minutes. Um, how you can apply to become a certified phlebotomist through our School of Phlebotomy. This is the day in the life of the phlebotomist video. I'm not gonna show this to you right now because it is a little long, but if you would like to see this video, you can go on to hnl.com and you can go on to our phlebotomy website and you can watch this video and it'll show you a little bit more about exactly what our phlebotomists do. But just to give you an overview, our phlebotomists do everything from registering the patient to drawing their blood and to processing the specimen to get it ready to come back here to the lab at Robel Road. So it is fully encompassing when you're dealing with the patient, you're doing everything. So just to recap a little bit, uh, H&L Lab Medicine School of Phlebotomy is eight weeks long. You are paid as a per diem employee at the rate of $10 per hour. You spend two weeks in the classroom and that classroom instruction is here at Robel Road. So the address is 794 Robel Road if anybody wants to look it up. Again, right behind the Lehigh Valley Airport. And then you do six weeks clinical hands-on rotation, and that could be at any of our H&L Lab Medicine PSCs. We try to not have to send you really far away. We try to look at the amount of students we have and the availability we have at our clinical sites, but you could be expected to drive up to like a half hour to 45 minutes to get to your clinical sites. There is the potential for full or part-time employment upon graduation. So what we do is we, you know, treat that eight weeks as an eight-week interview. We see how you're doing with your skills, how you are as an employee with attendance, all right? And we look at everything because basically, you know, we want to bring the people that are the best fit for H&L and that meet our values into our program so that when you do graduate, we can offer you a position that we have available at that time. These are just some pictures of our class that we just graduated in January. So on your left, um, Karen Chalet is the woman with the reddish hair. She is the program director and she is showing one of the students how to draw blood using our fake arm. So yes, we do give you practice first before you have to go stick somebody live. Uh, we have fake arms that they have fake blood that goes through them. 
And that's how you learn your skill, like how to use the needle, what tubes to choose, everything. And Karen does a great job of teaching you everything, both in the classroom and in the clinical lab environment to get you ready. Uh, we have faculty that are people that work here at h &L that specialize in their areas that also help teach the classes. And then we get donors, basically, um, employees for two to three days on the week before you go out to clinical. And they are people that come in and they let you try to actually stick them before we send you out to a patient center. So we just did that this week with our present class. You know, we had volunteers who came in from our areas here and we had them practice on the students and the students all did a really great job. So you will be more than ready to go out into the patient service center to stick, you know, real patients. We don't just throw you out there. And then we have a graduation when you're done at the end. So at the end of eight weeks, we wanna celebrate your successes. And we have a really nice little graduation ceremony. Um, unfortunately, this last time it had to be virtual for their families, but we're hoping in the future that, you know, we can have the families come and make it a really nice live event as well. But we did do for their families virtual this time. So the school of phlebotomy right now, we are in session one where we started on February 21st and they will end on April 15th. Our next session coming up is May 9th to July 1st. So we are presently accepting applications at this time. Registration for that ends on April 9th. And then you can see that we have other sessions coming up after that. So in July and then again in October. And we'll talk a little bit about applying in just a few minutes. So what are the program requirements? First of all, a high school diploma or GED, a valid driver's license. And a lot of you may ask, well, why do I have to have a valid driver's license? First and foremost, you need to be able to get here to class for the two weeks. Then you need to be able to get to wherever you're going to work for your PSC clinical rotations. Also, if and when you are hired, you know, you are expected to always be able to get to work. And sometimes they may ask you to go to another center to fill in for the day. So that is why you need to have a valid driver's license. You know, unfortunately you can't be depending on the bus or having someone drop you off or pick you up because sometimes, you know, you may be asked to go somewhere else or you may be asked to, you know, um, come in at a different time and when the buses or whatever don't run. So you do need to have a valid driver's license by the time you start the program. We also need a copy of your unofficial graded high school or college transcript. So you don't have to send away and pay money for anyone. Um, you can just, you know, screenshot one off your, um, if you have a portal that you go in for your school or something that they sent you that was an unofficial copy, we do not need an official copy. And foremost and last, a willingness to learn. So, you know, we want people that are eager to learn, who want to learn, who have a dedication to their career, because that is going to actually make all the difference in the world to how successful you are. And you will have schoolwork to do at night. Uh, we say usually anywhere from an hour to two hours of homework to do. We also require you to have um, a computer and access to Wi-Fi. So, there is work that you have to do computer wise. We use something called media labs where we have practice exercises for you to do. Uh, we also have you hook into our h &L university and we have stuff for you to do on there as well as we will give you textbooks and you will have to do homework in your textbooks as well. So having that willingness to learn and that eagerness to be successful in your career, you know, really goes into making sure that you are successful and you complete all of those requirements. 
next steps. So go to hnl.com. And if you go to the About Us tab, when you hit the About Us tab at the top, you'll see a drop down and it'll say School of Phlebotomy. Just click on School of Phlebotomy and then you will be able to apply. Once you apply and you upload your resume and your copy of your unofficial transcript and everything else that's required there, it will come to us. Someone from our HR department will go through the applications and they will pre-screen anybody that applies. So at that point, they will schedule a phone interview. They will pre-screen you over the phone. If they still feel that you are a good applicant, then they will schedule you for an in-person interview. And you will come in here to Robo Road. You will meet with a member of the HR team, a member of the school, and a member of the phlebotomy management team. At that point, the team will decide whether or not you are accepted into the program. If you are accepted into the program, then HR will reach out to you again, give you a formal offer. If you accept, then we get the ball rolling to start getting you ready to come into class. So you will have to go for an employee physical and our employee physicals are done through Lehigh Valley Hospital. So you will go to their employee health network to get your physical. You will also have to have clearances done. We do pay for your child abuse and um, criminal background clearances. So we will run those on you, um, but you will have to go get your fingerprints done for that, but that will be paid through h and And also we need record of immunizations. So you'll have to give us a record of your immunizations. We also do require the COVID vaccine and the flu vaccine, okay? And as long as you get those upon starting the program, then that's good. You don't have to necessarily finish the series of the COVID vaccine before you start, but you have to have at least started the series of the COVID vaccine. If all that's clear and everything's good to go, then congratulations. You enter into the program and you start with the next class. The day that you show up, we give you your books and then you start your way onto your career. So what skills will you have upon completion in the program? Well, what you will have is you will be competent in drawing blood and you will have the compassion and the empathy that you need to deal with patients. If you're hired, then we have another training program that you go through with my trainers. And that is a five week training. And then we teach you patient registration and processing and everything else after that. So at this point, we have about five, six minutes left. So I'm gonna open it up if anybody has any questions. So at this point, you're all muted. So if you have any questions, you can either type into the chat and Jess will let me know what your questions are, or you can unmute yourself and you can ask your questions at this time. Don't be shy. So for the second, or I guess the third and the fourth session of this year, um, applications aren't open for those yet. Is that correct? Yes and no. So you can apply, but when they call you, if you would rather go to the later session, you can just let them know that I'm interested in not starting in May, I'm interested in starting in July, and then you know they will keep your application and they will get back to you, or they may actually do the interview process and then just slot you uh, for the class later. Okay, perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Kim, two came in via chat. Uh, the first one is what percentage of students get hired after completion? Sure. Well, percentage right now, what we hired um, in the very first class we had, we hired 95% uh, of them. And the percentage right now is not known because we just started the other class uh, this past week. 
but our first class had um, 10 students. This class has 19 students. So, you know, we'll see when we're done this 19, what the percentage is, but uh, we've had a lot of success in the past as well. Like I said, this used to be a paid school program that you had to pay for. And we've hired just about every single person that actually went to that school at that time. And a few of them are still with us. Good question. The second question that came in chat, I think is pretty close to the question you had just answered, but if I'm interested in the October class, when would the application be open? Right, so like I said, you can, you can apply now. Um, you can also go by, you know, the deadline that is listed there, but, you know, don't be hesitant in applying now. And that way, you know, you have a head start on everything. And like I said, they can always slot you for a later class. Anybody else? Uh, one more just came in. Is there a fee for the post-training program? No, there is not. So actually, once you graduate and they hire you, um, I have trainers that work for me. So you just go right into our new hire training. And that is three weeks with my trainers and then two weeks back out in the field with a mentor before you're actually allowed to be by yourself. And then we also circle back with you in a couple weeks after that, to start teaching you process training. So that is all part of just being a new hire, just like if you went and you worked uh, at McDonald's and they trained you on how to make hamburgers on the grill, <laughs> okay? Same type of thing is, you know, that's all part of, of being a hire. Um, one thing that we do is if you decide when you're done school and you wanna take your um, ASCP exam, which is the certification exam for a phlebotomist. Um, if you take it and you pass, we will reimburse you the $135 for that. So, um, you know, we're not requiring that you have the ASCP right now, but we are, you know, pushing people to um, get their certification because in the future it may be required. Uh, one more just came in, Kim. Are there any resources available like bookstores or Amazon, et cetera, to take a look at prior to the session to get started? Um, of course you can. I mean, you can go on to Amazon and you can, you know, look at phlebotomy books. And we also teach you medical terminology and we teach you, you know, patient care. But necessarily, I would say the best thing to do is if you're really interested in the career, is just search, you know, what is a career in phlebotomy? And that'll kind of give you a head start and you know, get you on the path the right way. I mean, there's not really anything that I would say would be worth it for you right now to go out and purchase because the books are rather expensive. Um, for instance, the phlebotomy book that we use is like $80. And, you know, we're giving that to you for free as well. Um, and we also have a med term book which is almost up there in price as well. So really, I would just I would just Google search stuff. I mean, you can find almost anything you want anymore on Google and and just do it that way. And there is actually a, a web page on our website under the same place that she was discussing before, our school phlebotomy page. So there's a frequently asked questions web page there that we created for people interested in the school phlebotomy. So if you wanna check that out, that can answer some of the questions as well. Great, thanks, Jess. Anybody else? Well, if anybody thinks of any questions that you have, if you get off of this call and you're like, oh, wow, you know, I, I really wanna know that, or I forgot to ask something, um, feel free to reach out to me um, at hnl.com here. Um, my email is my name. So it's Kimberly.Townsend at hnl.com. And also if you go on to the School of Phlebotomy website and you go to apply, um, our my name and Karen Chalet, the program director's names are both on there as well as our contact information. And you can reach out to us. Um, you can give us a call, you can send us an email. We'd be happy to answer any of your questions. I just dropped Kim's email in the chat for everyone if you'd like to see that. All right, thanks Jess. Anybody else, any last minute questions? All right, well, thank you everybody for joining us. 
again, you know, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be happy to answer them and we hope to see some of you in the near future. Thank you everybody. Thanks Jess and have a great day. Thanks Kim.